Great, hey, yeah. thanks, Melanie. <laughs> um, I'm presenting on the article titled Marine Calcifiers Exhibit Mixed Responses to CO2 Induced Ocean Acidification. I hope you enjoyed reading it. It's really short and to the point, so. So, um, as Christian already stated, um, there has been a 0.1 unit decrease in the pH since the Industrial Revolution, and it's suspected to decrease 0.3 to 0.4 units by 2100 and so this is a really big problem because it really affects the pH really affects organisms and especially green benthic organisms and how they produce their shells and so the main purpose of this study was to analyze how um, the decreased levels of pH has impacted the calcification of um, green benthic organisms shells so I know the paper didn't really go into depth a lot about the methods, and so I'm going to go a little bit more in depth about why they did what they did with their methods and how they carried them out. So basically, they carried out an ex situ um, method, and this is basically where they brought organisms, organisms in from um, Maine all the way down to the east coast of Florida, and they put them in 24, 38 meter aquarium in isothermal conditions. And so isothermal conditions is where they change all the variables that they keep the temperature consistent throughout all of the aquaria. And um, they kept it at 25 degrees Celsius for this specific experiment. Um, the reason they do that is because um, the fixed temperature is necessary to maintain the range of aragonite saturation state, which I'll talk about further on in the presentation. Another thing they did is they um, gathered water from the Cape Cod coast, and um, it was 0.2 microliter filter seawater, and they grew the organisms, organisms over a 60-day period. Um, within the aquariums, they had um, equilibrated um, CO2 gas mixtures, and they keep changing this over a 14-day um, period span, where they took out 75% of the seawater, and then they exchanged it, and then they had um, an analyzer which changed the CO2 levels throughout that period of time. And so they also analyzed the um, average seawater saturation states based on the levels of the Okay, so from all of the data that they gathered, they had to do calculations to check, calculate the net calculation rates and the dissolution rates. And so they did this by um, using a method called buoyant weight. So basically what they did um, over the 60 day period, they measured the mass of the entire calcifier, and then um, throughout certain points in the 60 day interval, they would take the dissolution, or they would take the um, calcification off from the shell of the organism, and they would use that dry weight and compare it to the total calcification rate that they had it at. And so that would calculate um, based on those like, certain periods of time in that calcification. They also had to calculate the arachnite and the saturation levels based off of the measurements of pH, the alkalinity, the salinity, and the temperatures that they gathered from the water samples. And um, they used carbon, carbonic constants such as K1, K2, and the pressure in order to um, plug into this equation right here and gather the saturation levels. And so throughout this whole experiment, they um, did a regression analysis to compare the levels of net calcification and dissolution compared to the saturation state. And they used the least squares method. And the least squares method is an overall solution which minimizes the errors from individual equations. So basically what it does is it minimizes the sum of the squared residuals or the differences between the observed and the fixed values. So it gives a really good regression line whenever you use this method. And then they also used um, the Huber White Sandwich estimator variance, which also increased the p value and the significant, the statistical significance of each value that was calculated. <clears throat> so now we're going to look at the results, and um, we did see a lot of variant results. Um, this is the most common result, so 10 out of 18 of the species that were um, looked at showed a negative linear, or not 10 of them, but 6 of them showed a linear response, but they showed a neg negative net calcification rate compared to um, the increase of the CO2 levels. So basically I'm just going to talk
talk a little bit about the graphs themselves because I know they look a little simple, but it might be a little bit hard to determine. I know Christian and I have to like determine the levels of um, net classification compared to what it meant for the increase of saturation levels. So basically, whenever you're increasing your saturation level, you're lowering the um, the amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide that is within the atmosphere or within the water, and you're increasing the pH levels, and you're also increasing increasing the saturation level. So right here, you can see basically that there is a negative linear response because as the CO2 levels are shown right here, they're actually high for the low levels of saturation rate, um, it decreases whenever the saturation level is reached. And so you can see that it progresses throughout each of the um, organisms that are analyzed here. Also, we see a negative threshold here as well, but instead of it being linear, we see it being exponential. And so basically, um, what we're looking at is for of the calcification, when it is increasing, it's greatly at the middle and it remains constant throughout. So whenever the CO2 levels are decreasing, you can see that it just stays constant throughout that. And then I'll talk about that later within the factors that affect the organisms. Um, with the blue muscle, it was pretty rare, but they can, you can see that there was no response for that. So that is something we'll look about. But not only do we see negative responses, we see positive responses. And so for these graphs, you can look at the net calcification rate and the degree of saturation, and it just depends on the level of atmospheric carbon dioxide. So in this case, you can see that it really starts to increase, but then it starts to decrease after a certain point of atmospheric carbon dioxide is reached within the tank. And then we also experience the negative positive. It's not your fault. <laughs> this uh, black one. And then for some of them, they actually maintain an elevated pH 
um, regardless of what the carbon dioxide levels were. And they do this through dissolved inorganic carbon, where they increase as the um, levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide increase as well, because they can convert the DIC into carbon and metals. And then for the protective external organic layer, um, basically this is just the structure and composition of the layers that are found within the organisms. And um, what we found in the paper is that when there's a high total coverage of it, there's a greater resilience to the elevated PCO2 levels um, than those that are more exposed, like pongs, or worms, or lots of plants, which don't have a very high coverage of organic material. For the polymorph mineralogy, um, basically we're just comparing the arachnite, high magnesium, and low magnesium calcite in the shell and the skeleton of the organisms. And so what we noticed in the, in the experiment is that six species underwent the net dissolution, and then five of those secreted shells that composed primarily, primarily of the soluble forms, which was the arachnite and the high magnesium calcite, calcite forms. And so basically, we just know that organisms that utilize the more soluble forms of calcium carbonate, which is the aragonite and the high forms of magnesium calcite, are obviously more affected by elevated calcium carbonate than the less soluble ones. And that's part of the reason why in the earlier graphs that have shown, they analyze the aragonite compared to the um, calcite because they know that it's more soluble and because of that, um, we can see varying effects of pH level, um, pH levels being induced. Um, another factor that can really play in with the um, varying levels of the calcium carbonate and that calcium pollution rates is uh, photosynthesis. So basically, um, some organisms, organisms use photosynthesis as a way to um, or they, they use increased CO2 levels um, and then just increase the rate of photosynthesis. And so this doesn't really affect them because um, they use photosynthesis in order to produce their calcium carbonate shell. Um, and then some examples of this would be like the temperate coral, the halomidia, and the coralline red algae. So basically, all in all, we just know that different um, organized organisms are affected by different levels of PCO2, and it just depends on the factors that are used, um, that are affected by them. And so when we identify the positive and negative responses, um, we can also offer a way to identify the CO2-induced extinction of um, events in certain fossil